Hello out there. Again, it's Pastor John Carlos, your Pastor Christian Pentecostal Church in Staten Island, New York. And we're continuing our Bible study. The title of it is The Holy Spirit. Just to review a little bit, last week we spoke about the deity of the Holy Spirit. He's omnipresent. The Bible tells us in Psalms 139.7, David writes in a, in a beautiful way, Where shall I go from thy spirit? Where can I hide from thy spirit? Where shall I be? I flee from thy presence. Nowhere. Right? Omnipresent. Everywhere at the same time. He's omniscient. Again, 1 Corinthians 2, verses 10 and 11. You can look them up. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Holy Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, the deep things of God, and so on. You can read how the Spirit of God knows everything. Everything. He's omnipotent, all-powerful. In Genesis 1-2, we see that the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and created all the things that we see in all the animals, the, the, the birds, everything that we see. He's eternal. There's no beginning, no ending to him, just like Christ and just like the Father, eternal. Hebrews 9, 14. He's called God in the Bible. You can read it in the book of Acts in the, th in the fifth chapter. There's a story where someone comes to bring an offering and, and lied to the Holy Ghost, to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And Paul even gives him a chance to change his life, and he does it, and he, his life is, is the solution to it. We also read that the Holy Spirit is equal with God, the Father, and the Son. They are the same, three persons in one. In the baptism experience of Christ, when Jesus Christ was beginning his ministry and he comes and meets John the Baptist, his cousin, and we see that when he's baptized in Matthew, the third chapter, in the 16th and 17th verse, all three persons of the Godhead are present. We see the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, descending like a dove from heaven. We hear the voice of God speaking. This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. We also see it in the temptation of Christ. Christ is led out to be, to be tested by the Holy Spirit. And we see that the Spirit of God is the most powerful thing that we can use against the devil, his spirit. In fact, in Matthew 4, 1 and 7, when we read this story about his temptation, <laughs> Jesus tells him, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And we see in the whole story that it was the Holy Spirit that led him out there. In the, in the upper room, Jesus tells his disciples in John 14 that the Comforter would come. He has, he has resurrected and he's about to ascend within 40 days after this. And he tells them there's a Comforter coming. The Holy Spirit is coming, not to just, just to be with you, but on you and in you. Wow. Again, Paul even declares in his prayer in the book of Ephesians, in, in two, chapter 2, verse 18, it ends with this. For though through him we both have access to one Holy Spirit unto the Father. So we're seeing Christ, the Holy Spirit, and the Father in the same prayer. Again, in 2 Corinthians 13 and 14, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Wow. So we see all three aspects of God in the, these scriptures as we're reading. Even Peter, speaking in 1 Peter 4 and 14, he tells us, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctification of the Holy Spirit unto the obedience of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you be multiplied. 1 Peter 1 verse 2. In the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit is declared. In the second chapter, the 33rd verse, therefore being by the right hand of God exalted 
and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he that had shed it forth, he's talking about Christ, which ye now see and hear. Again, we also see in the word that there are many titles that is given to the Holy Spirit. Listen carefully. He is called the Spirit of God. Wow. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Holy Spirit of God dwelleth in you? 1 Corinthians 3.16 He is also the Spirit of Christ. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Holy Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you, now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Romans 8, verse 9. The Holy Spirit, as we said, is eternal. The Bible tells us that he will not, he wasn't coming up at some period of time. He always was, oh, and always is, and always will be. In Hebrews 9.14, we are told this. The eternal spirit. He's the spirit of truth. A lot of people don't like this one. In John 16, verse 13. Howbeit when he, the Holy Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you, Jesus is speaking, into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear. That shall he speak, and he will know and show you things to come. Wow. He's also called the spirit of grace. Now grace is an interesting word because it means the unmerited, unearned favor of God. And here we read in Hebrews 10 and 29, it tells us of how much more sore punishment suppose ye, shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, and had counted the blood of the covenant where he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite to the Holy Spirit of grace. Wow. When you're reading your Bible, when you see the word spirit capitalized, he is talking about the Holy Spirit. At other times, it might be the spirit of man. But every time you see that capital spirit, the capital S, it's the Holy Spirit that is being talk, spoken about. He's the Spirit of glory. Mm -hmm. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the Spirit, Holy Spirit of glory yes. and of God rested upon you. Yeah. On their part is evil spoken of, but on your part, he, the Holy Spirit, is glorified. 1 Peter 4.14 4, He is the Spirit of life. In Romans 8, 2, we're told, for the law of the Holy Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, notice this, had made me free from the law of sin and death. Wow. Remember, the Holy Spirit dwells in the believers. After Acts 2, 4, God's Spirit not only came upon people, but dwells in us. Dwells in us. He is the spirit of wisdom and revelation. If you read the book of Revelation, you will find that John is taken in the spirit to heaven to see all the things that he writes about. In Ephesians 1.17, we are told that God, our Lord Jesus Christ, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, notice all three are in this, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Wow. We said this before. He's the comforter. This is the way Jesus described him to his disciples. The comforter will come, right? And again, we see in John 14, 26, Jesus' words. But the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, here we see the Trinity all in one, one sentence, he shall teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Wow. He is also the spirit of promise. 
In Acts 1, verses 4 and 5, it tells us, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them, Jesus here speaking, that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. A promise that was made in the Old Testament as well as in the New. The Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. Hallelujah. In Romans 8, 15, he is called the spirit of adoption. Right? Adoption. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the Holy Spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Remember, we came into the relationship with God when the Holy Spirit came upon the Gentiles and filled them, the early believers, even the disciples, didn't realize that the Spirit of God was not only for them, but for all who would come to Christ. And they were shocked when the Holy Spirit fell upon Gentiles and filled them as well. We have been adopted. Jesus describes it in another place. We have been put into the vine. We're part of the family of God as Gentiles, adopted by God himself. The spirit of holiness. Again, Romans 1, verse 4. And declared to be the son of God with power according to the Holy Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Remember when Jesus left, he left us a comforter who dwells in us. And that comforter is all these things and more. Being in us, he reminds us of things that are sinful, whether an act or a thought. He keeps us on the right road to eternity. And our part is to listen and be led by him into the good things, the right things, Amen. and of course, to ask forgiveness when we do something foolish. Amen. He's the spirit of holiness. Right? In Romans 1, 4. Declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Holy Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. This scripture is telling us that Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. Wow. He's the Spirit of faith. In 2 Corinthians 4 and 13, we are told we having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore I have spoken, we, ha we also believe and therefore speak. We're going to start something that probably we won't finish today. But in the Bible, in the scripture, there are many emblems to describe the Holy Spirit. We're going to take a look at them actually 13 names that are kind of emblems and titles, names, designated emblems, that give us even a more intimate view of, the, of his nature and the, the mission of the Holy Spirit. In John 1 and 32, we see John bear record saying, I saw the Holy Spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode on him. Wow. Speaking of Christ. So we see that the Holy Spirit being given an explanation as a dove. A dove is usually a, a very docile type of bird, but it also indicates purity. The dove is usually a sign of peace and of modesty. And by Using this emblem, we see that it's really the mission that Christ came for, for us. Coming in purity, coming in peace, and coming in modesty. And I say modesty in this sense. Everything that was done to Christ, he could have stopped. He could have called 10,000 angels, that old song used to say. All these things, Christ came 
to show us who he is, and also to carry out all the prophecies of the Old Testament. In the Song of Solomon, even in the Old Testament, it says, my dove, my undefiled, is but one. She is the only one of her mother. She is the choice one of her that bear her. The daughters saw her and blessed her, and the queens and the concubines, and they praised her. This is an Old Testament description of the Holy Spirit. And here again we see the, the use of the word dove in Psalm 55, 6. And I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then I would fly away and be at rest. Another name, another emblem that is used for the Holy Spirit is water. Indicating what? Without water, there would be no life. Mm. Even now, the scientists are looking at planets to see if there's any water or any sign of water. Because without water, nothing can be, can be built. People can't be uh, alive. Again, water is a powerful ingredient in our life. But it also indicates cleansing. Water is used for cleansing in every country. And look what it says here in Isaiah 44, three. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my Holy Spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. We also see that the Holy Spirit uses another emblem, light, healing, and anointing for service. When someone becomes a minister, there's a ceremony. In that ceremony, he is dedicated or she is dedicated to the Lord. And at that ceremony, the Holy Spirit is very important because without the Holy Spirit, we cannot be men or women of God. Look what Jesus says in Luke 4 and 18. The Holy Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised. So we see that in ministry, the Holy Spirit working through men and women has a, not just a job, but an order to be a person who will bring liberty, who will bring deliverance, who will bring healing to people that are hurting. Look at Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. In Hebrews 1 and 9, thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And finally, in 1 John 2.20, but ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. We'll stop here today, and we'll continue about who is the Holy Spirit? Why was he sent? And what he does in our lives. Father, we just pray that you will help us to see that the Spirit of God is here. He dwells in us. And there are so many indications of what he can and, and will do in our lives if we open our hearts to him. Lord, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, we can change people in Christ. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, nations can be changed. Cities can be changed. Even the world can be changed. 
Father, we thank you for that comforter that you left. And we pray that one day we will be able to stand before God and hear him say those words. Well done, my good and faithful servant. God bless you. And look up those scriptures. God bless you.